the select board, which I think is pretty comprehensive of where this board last was. And so I think we're mostly here to um, figure out some details around the spreadsheet. And, and it's good to have at least two board members here because that's, that can help inform what they might want to see this to look like. But also, um, I just I want to say that um, Joe and I had a conversation about the town hall air compressors, which was not something that we talked about here. I think if I remember, we, we talked yeah, about we the, did with Aaron and stuff. I think and, and even. But was that included? I, somehow I'm not sure if that was included in your note to the board from the ABM. I don't think it was. I was wondering about that. Okay. Um, it was the yeah, no, it's point four town hall AC compressors. Okay. Where it goes, oh, uh, since right, these compressors right. are past end okay. of life, the town's spending money on maintenance due to their age. They've been yep. fully funded. And then we're recommending the replacement of them in 2022. Good. Thank you for that. And that's 100000 um, It's actually down from what the spreadsheet started at, which I think was 100, 104. Uh, 140. I think it was 140. And then 103 was what you had in funding current yep. funding for it. Yep. So yes, they're they're expensive and I'm not sure you're gonna need all of the hundred to replace. Um, I'm not sure if it's three or four that need replacement, but likely there will be leftover funding. So so when you write a warrant article and you say to buy um, to replace the air conditioner units at the town hall, um, Nobody can use it for anything than that. You can decide what does that mean, like are we replacing two of them or three of them or four of them. Um, and then when you get quotes and determine the, the finances of it, you know, this committee will suggest that, that you allocate $100,000 on the, $100, on the warrant article, but that doesn't mean you have to if all of your quotes come back that you really only need to spend 60. 60 will get spent and then 40 will come back to the fund that this group will then redistribute to other projects. So, um, you know, you the, the select board can certainly take the recommendation of $100,000 and decide preemptively we don't need that much money and only put 80 on the ballot. Um, that's kind of a political decision if you think that it would be sold to the public better that way. If you are sure that you can do the scope of the project for that much money you absolutely have that discretion. Just know that it's funded at 100. So and we haven't gotten, the town hasn't gotten any official uh, estimates on this yet. Correct. OK, so and when do the Warren articles have to be written? Um, they, so all of the, the select board needs to present to the budget committee. Currently, that's scheduled for September 29th, but they can work with the budget committee about moving different departments and topics. But they present to the budget committee. The budget committee only recommends, doesn't recommend. Mm -hmm. that The warrant needs to be finalized by the select board in its final absolute form by the end of, of January. Okay. However, this decision needs to be made by the first week in January because Anything financial related, the operating budget and all of the financial warrant articles need to be presented at the um, town budget public hearing, which takes place in the middle of January. So the board, you know, the board needs to make the decision about what to present to the budget committee. In theory, the board will stand by whatever that decision is, but maybe through feedback from the budget committee, maybe they'll decide to not go through with one of them or decrease the price of one of them or, or whatever that feedback you know, um, ha compels them to do. Um, but then after, so, so then it needs to be like, the idea needs to be final for the presentation in January to the public. And then that's a public hearing. Um, so you hear from the public about what you're presenting and then the select board can then do what the select board this past year decided to do and take digitization and the master plan off. So just because you present it in at the public hearing doesn't mean you have to keep it on the warrant if for what you know if after hearing from the public that doesn't make sense. Or you can change the amounts at that point, like decrease them. You wouldn't want to increase them because you, you know whatever you're doing, you have to present at that public hearing. 
So, but the, so there's time to get a more accurate estimate of what the replacement cost would be. For um, the there certainly is. The only caution I would say about that is that the generator was approved in 2020. You can carry money over and for one year, but that money will absolutely expire at the end of this year. And the police chief is charged with getting one more quote to get that figured out, and then the select board needs to approve that. So it's, it's coming to a close, but my point with that is the police department is understaffed and, and doing I need a call today about it. Actually. You know, so, so, so if, you know, if, if staffing works out such that they can get a quote, then absolutely that number can be refined yet. I, so but the real question is who would be in charge of getting a quote, um, right? Well, that, that is a big question, right. yes. So, yeah. But Joe makes a good point, you know, because to me <clears throat> that number is just like uh, um, something you pull out of the air if you have no absolute idea what one device costs. Well, and this is why I'm I have suggested that to this committee that after they make the recommendation to the select board about what to put on the, um, on the warrant for 2022, that they continue to meet at least quarterly to go, like, to, to kind of fill in some gaps and to continue to communicate about how um, we would really like to see the roof of the highway department replaced, but we don't have meaningful quotes around that. We have, like, do it this way, do it that way, but we don't have it do the way we're interested in. So, you know, there's always more quotes to get. How, how long, you know, does the equipment that we just purchased, the air pack filling station, what's the lifespan? You know, we, we need to know some of these details so we can keep this spreadsheet up to date. Because in theory, the air pack filling station go back, goes back on for replacement in 25 or 30 years. Not that we're funding it yet, but just right. to keep track of it. So um, there's, certain, there's always work to do. So um, can I ask you how you arrived at 100000 Was it just like... We just talked about, about, about so it was. About it, it started at 140 because two were emergency replacements re within the last few years, um, and and we had the ladies' room flooding incident recently. That was an AC problem which wasn't really fixed. It's just sort of patched along. When those recent ones were repaired, it was between I think 12 and 20 thousand dollars a piece, something like that. It was clear we didn't need the 140, but at the same time, it was funded at 103. So it is rather arbitrary. Okay. Yeah, I, I think one of the problems that we have here is is how do we go and get more accurate estimates for some of these major projects here. And the question is, who's going to do that? I mean, I don't know what... Well, and it's a significant amount of time. Yeah, no, yes, um, it is. Especially for, you know, the value of those projects, you would want more than one quote. So mm -hmm. you're touring the building three times or introducing a vendor, like, you know, three different vendors to, or even more potentially. Right, but there's yeah. nobody on staff. I don't know if you can hire a consultant to come in and say, look, your job here for X number of dollars is to go and be, our, be the town's agent to go and, and come up with a proposal for this. So you know, it's right, there's nobody really, in the building that's going to, you know, well, these guys don't have the time. And you, so, so, right, exactly so. But what's great about having two out of three here is that now they see part of the problem and you know that you have facility director funds available and you certainly don't have to choose to hire for that position but you can use those dollars to maybe give somebody a stipend to figure some of this out. Right. Or like Tom Fox. maybe, if you will, right but okay. you know, right. you, you, can, you can do something short term with that money even if you don't want to do something long term. With yeah, it. I mean, so I would definitely, I'm sorry, I would nope. definitely advocate getting somebody on a per diem basis that can go through some of these major efforts that we're saying we need to get done mm -hmm. and put together for the select board a proposal and, and for the SIP committee a proposal about I've gone and talked to all of these vendors I've vetted them these are the best people here's my recommendation so that the select board doesn't have to go do all that work and I think we have to as a town we have to support it a little bit more and I agree with Joe when he says the more important point to look at is getting 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 the quotes before you actually put it on the warrant article because you know you don't want to put a warrant on and say it's a hundred thousand dollars and then find out when it's really quoted it is a hundred and forty. 
So, Absolutely. So and I'd rather. So I'd rather. I'd rather. I think we have the time. I'd rather spend the time and money up front, even if we have to stipend and have someone do it, so we get accurate mm -hmm. information that we present. Warren articles of town, so then they get. We're all getting the right number. So I, I, I just don't think that's more sense. realistic and helpful. Huh? I think it's more realistic. And yeah. Helpful. I mean, some things are going to be straightforward. I think certain things you're going to get a price, and you know what they're going to be. And, and other things are. Well, right, and, and with some things, because of COVID, some things being 50% more than they were last year or, or whatever, like, you, you just don't know. Like, ACs, if you asked me a year ago, I think I'd be pretty confident but in what ACs cost for this building because we did it, but now, who's to say? So just know that when you make the decision about the warrant, there's a lot of financial flexibility in the plan, so if you decide that you really need 140 for ACs, you can choose to fully fund it from the fund, and there will be consequences that this committee can work out later. You know, it, it just underfunds, you know, everything's underfunded anyway. We can just underfund it differently while we're work on, working on getting, in the longer term, more funded, if that makes sense. So, I, I think we're in agreement that we should get somebody into, and, and I think the other departments seem to have a pretty good handle on their costs based on the other meetings that we had from. The, the the this first section of the of the yes. town hall are just they're just so big and, and it's not a facility person here so. and, and stuff. I, I think mm -hmm. that would be a useful effort to go through some of these things here. And probably just the ones that are either twenty twenty two at least. And maybe the the um, the roof at the at the garage and and have somebody figure that out. Now next question is Who's even going to find the person to figure it out? I mean, I don't know, in administratively in the town, are there companies that are out there that can come in and do the due diligence that's necessary here with maybe oversight by the select board or some other? Group? I, I, I don't really have an answer for that except to say that I thought to call some property management companies because I thought that might mm -hmm. be a way to have somebody who's used to dealing with vendors for repairs and maintenance projects. They would know some people, or at least have people that they're used to working with, um, and they themselves might have the skills to do some of the, some, some of the smaller things around here. And I didn't get any calls back about that. So about, Is it Cutter? Who owns the mills? Yes, Cutter Family Properties. Right, there was, Aaron, when we were right. doing the Brian stuff with here. the moving of the SUA, there was one of the there was a guy there as part of that committee yeah. that seemed Brian to have yeah. 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 Um, I don't know, so it's just brainstorming here. I, I think there are definitely, um, we've got a lot of, of skills and talent in our community, and, and it may be something that, I don't know if you can put out an email and say, who knows people who do X, Y, and Z, like we're submitting, um, you know, requests for qualifications for um, for a roofer and, you know, an HVAC person or, or whatever different projects you want to do, just say, you know, by whatever date and time, please submit your, your, we have a request for qualification. So in other words, we don't really, we're not promising to do a project. We just want you to qualify yourself as the best electrician in town or, or whatever it is that we're asking for for different kinds of vendors. Well, see, I was thinking more of somebody who would be, let's just call well, like him a, a QC, project like, manager, yeah. who's going to come in and, and say, okay, here's the task. We need to know what it's going to cost the AC compressors in this town. Yes. That person doesn't have to be the expert. He just You're has right. to be You're detailed right. enough to go find, might have contacts. That's why I thought about somebody like Brian, somebody who's in the business yeah. and would know, yeah. I'm going to bring in these people, put together a proposal, put it to the select board, here's my suggestion, and then the select board says, Thanks, but we can't do that or whatever. But you know, so most of the legwork is done ahead of time. So how do you find that person? Yeah, yeah. I, I, and I, that's I, where I thought you were going with the email out to the town saying, "Well, is and there somebody who too. wants to be this project manager, a facilities project manager for these specific things." Well, and particularly if the select board's willing to use the facility director money or some of it to say, you know, we're willing to pay, pay somebody X number of dollars to do this scope of services. Find us to find us three qualified quotes for yeah. you know that project, you know, mm -hmm. for a stipend of X. Maybe you'd get people to say, 
yeah, I'm a handyman, and I know people, and I'm, you know, I, I'm good at, I could do that. Like, that, that's, that's an interesting, I, I think there's potential there. Yeah. And Aaron, what about the facilities person at the school? I mean, he's only part-time. You're a new person now. Yeah, yeah, he's new, and he's sort of still coming up to speed um, on the school side. So I don't think it would be, you know, before when we had Dick Fortier, it might have made more sense to um, see if he wanted to do some per diem work. Mm -hmm. He actually, actually now that I think of it, he just retired and he might actually be interested in picking up some part-time, uh, I mean I have no idea, but yeah. um, just throw it out there. I think Tom Clark is also a good place to start. Um, if he may know somebody, you know, he yeah. may know people as well. Even if he's not interested in actually taking on responsibility, he might make recommendations. Yeah, he knows everybody. Mm -hmm. in, in oh, he industry. definitely knows, you know, yeah. yes. But I think it's something to think about to put on the board agenda yes. that there's, you know, this idea and how does the board feel about what would be the scope of that we're asking this person to do and then what's an appropriate statement for that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe somebody by their good graces who's a resident and cares wants to volunteer to do that, but depending on what you're asking for, mm -hmm. that might be a lot. Well, um, and there are people out there that are willing to volunteer. And in fact, um, shortly after I got elected, somebody, um, somebody in town who, who works in real estate um, offered services. So I, I feel like there are people out there, if we had very specific needs and we, and we outlined them, and then reached out to the public. The, the, the only thing I would say about that is um, whoever you choose to do this, you know, to be getting quotes for you, mm -hmm. um, I would have them sign the conflict of interest policy. Mm -hmm. Because who's to say that it's not their brother-in-law and their cousin yeah, and their right. best friend that are the three quotes before you? Right. That may be not, like, super qualified. Not suggesting that people are like that, but sometimes people are like that. It's prudent to do that. Yeah, it's yeah. just prudent due diligence to do something like that. So I get this is a discussion. I guess it's an agenda item for the board to to so, decide. So, on. so this group can make whatever recommendations to the select board, but they're the ones who have to decide to um, fund something, not fund something, right. or to ask an employee to do something or not do something. So we can just recommend to them that they, in some way, get better quotes for at least the top section of things. Yes. The other sections of things that have come from specific departments um, are more informed because their staff have um, gotten quotes and, and looked at options, and so those numbers um, the department had stand behind, that we can purchase that item for that amount of money. So, so in the past, I'll say um, that I, we hear that department heads um, have information, but we never see it, and I would want to see it. So if it really is qualified information, I would want to see something, even one quote that gives us an idea that they're on target. You know? um, and, and that's absolutely prudent of you, and I, I would suggest that when this group, you, you already have basically the, you know, the whole proposal of this group, but that you reach out to department heads and say, I notice you have the whatever on your list. Can you show us the quotes now for that? Mm -hmm. um, so that you can determine for yourself, is that really $25,000? Or because of what's going on in the supply chain, do we want to budget 10% more just in case? Right. You know, that might not be a bad idea depending on, you know, particularly anything that's tech related because of what's going on with that. So, yeah. Um, Absolutely. Well, I, I think the uh, I'm going through when the police department was here. He, John, had an officer go his list of things. Where I mean, I think Kimmy had some of those numbers for you, and then the same for the fire department. Sean had a whole yes. presentation. So a lot of these numbers, as we decided what to do, came out of their presentation. The highway department. Um, you know, we talked mostly about about the roof. Everything else is pretty much out in the distance. So that was that was the main focus on, on that one. And the same is true for the the transfer station. There's not a lot of so, immediate Well stuff let's coming. since we have the benefit of having the board here, why don't we just um, do you want to explain the roof situation at the highway department? I mean from what he's from what it wasn't George who was that I believe was it's talking. Ed, yeah. But um, 
He just talked about every storm that comes through, they, they blow off shingles. Seems to have been, it's not a very old proof. Uh, it seems to have been a bad install job. The person's not around anymore. So it's, it seems that the town is kind of stuck with it. But the concern was, well, if, if every year you're paying a couple thousand dollars of it and the risk of you know, rotting boards and everything else, that was pretty much why, after that discussion, why we kind of felt well, we might as well just get it done right. And there was discussion around, should it be a metal roof? Should we do just the front, do just the back? I think it was mostly the, the front that would tend to blow off. Yeah, the off. front and, is the one that blows off, yeah. but it was all done at the same time. And so the, the shingles are perfectly fine themselves, they just were not secured properly. So did we get an estimate to repair it? So not, not to repair, because the repair only happens when there's an incident. So, so that's like $5,000 a shot. Like, so, so there is no estimate to go through and re-nail all of the existing shingles. There is no such quote for that. But he did get quotes for, so it dates back to 2008 when the building was built. Um, so 13 years old. So um, there's a quote for completely redoing it in metal, which was, I think, Ridiculous. like 150 or like, you know, Exorbitant, and then it was 48 to redo it with asphalt shingles. Um, but then this group wanted to know what would it cost to just do the front of the building, um, and leave, you know, because the back doesn't seem to really be a problem. So we don't have a quote for that. Yeah. So if, if that's an approach, and you know, I, I you can't. I've never looked at the back. I know if you if you drive past going to the transfer station, you can see that. You can see the patches where they haven't matched them up. But you know, that's the other piece. So this number could be a little bit lower. But that's why we wanted to just, you know, some of our approach was really to look at it and say, well, we're spending money to fix something every year or so. Why don't we just spend the money and make it a thing come off? I mean, we all have houses. We wouldn't treat our own house like this, really, from a, from a maintenance standpoint. I, I guess I don't know enough about the project to say um, whether I would replace the whole thing because if there's just specific yeah. areas, like just the front. It's the whole thing. Well, I mean, no, so, no, I think Kim's saying, should we do the, the short front and the long back? Or the proposal is to do the whole roof? Or just or just the front? And the right. Front is, so, is, so, so all the quotes we have are to do the whole roof. We yeah. don't have, and so this group asked for a quote to do just the front. Yeah. The, the, the shoddy workmanship is on the whole roof. You're just not seeing the effects of that in the back because it takes a really strong windstorm to make something happen and the way the wind blows it's typically only a problem in the front. Yeah. And I think this goes to the other items we talked about with the town of, of having somebody however come in and, and almost be the uh, temporary facilities manager looking at this stuff and say yep these are problems here's a reasonable I mean we all have opinions about maybe how we should fix it but Somebody more experienced than you know, a homeowner should come in and say, this is what you can do, it'll be reasonable, it'll last for this time, the back is okay. You know, so that just, take, that just takes time, somebody with the knowledge to go do it. It does, unless you have somebody like Tom Park that pretty much knows all yeah. the building. You know? Tom is he the does, artist. but I would caution you to, um, to talk to him about what he's willing to take on oh, yeah, before absolutely. you, you know. Yeah, I mean, that would be the first order of business is to sit down and have a discussion with him about what he would be willing to do with anything. Because um, realistically, he has all the knowledge. Um, so yeah, when you have a contractor coming in, we could have, we'll just bring the roof up. We could have three contractors come in and give us quotes, but they're not going to be in the best interest of the town. They're going to be in the best interest right. of the town. Right, you need somebody else to see. Mm -hmm. you know, they, really they might, we need to fix the whole roof to do it right. Yeah. right. That is really there when you do the front, right? Right, right. Exactly. And I think even this, I mean, if, again, if you we've all had homes where we've made, put major projects, and some of them we supervise them ourselves. I know my, my sister, when they did a big house, they paid somebody to supervise the whole piece. So I think even after the estimate gathering, for some of these things, it even makes sense to have a person who represents the town to make sure that it's done right. That they're not Absolutely. using, you know, I say I paid for this, but you're using this lower quality stuff. So it's those kinds of things that this person would be not only the preliminary one, but the implementation manager, just making sure that it's all. It's the right. same scenario as when um, a lot of people, like you said, someone builds a house, you get the general contractor who's hiring the plumber, mm -hmm. the plumber's doing it, the electrical and all that. Yeah. That's what you're referring to. Yeah. Right. 
But I mean, going to your point, um, I mean, my sister they, and brother-in-law, they did a big house, but they, so they had a general contractor, but they paid somebody else that was talking to them and even holding oh, wow. the general contractor to the, That's to the stuff. So, yikes. I mean, maybe it's not that complicated for some of these projects, but I think the point is having somebody who's overseeing and who has the town's interest. Not, I mean, you know, if you, if you use a substandard shingle, that savings is going into the contractor's pocket. Right. And well, and I think the point is we're in this position because somebody didn't oversee the installation of yeah. the roof to begin with, or otherwise it wouldn't have been installed in the manner it was installed. Right. 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 So, but that's not on the SIP for this year, not to be funded on the SIP for this year. No, the replace the roof is... Um, well, it is listed right there as yeah. 2022. Oh, but there's um, no money. Oh. Well, it has $50,000 there in column D. Right, but no money in the 2022 column. No. Which means, that, that's just, that's how much money you put away every year into the fund. Yeah. So, oh, it's okay. because if you look all the way to the right, the money's already there. Yeah, so, no, the gross I, I, capital I, cost is really what you're expecting to fund this year, and the year next to it indicates the year. Well, well, can you zoom out for a minute so we can talk about how the whole spreadsheet works? Uh, what do you mean by zoom out? So that we can see all of the columns. Oh, all at once? Yeah. We'll be able Just, to it's going to be tiny for yeah, a minute, no. I know. but So, um, in the beginning on the left in column D. How about if I just do this? Uh, I'll scroll alt, over. If you um, just do your spreadsheet and um, let's do alt, alt, and then, no, wait a minute, minus maybe. Mm, well, it's going to be in. Actually, go under, oh, right there, 100%. Actually, at the top, if you want to zoom. It's at, the, it's at the bottom right. You just need to. Oh, okay. Oh, there, oh, there, there you go. There okay. Too. Good. Thank yeah. you. Okay. You so, um, there, in column D, which you can't okay. see right now because it got hidden, but th that's the, co the gross capital cost. That's how much, there you go. How much does it cost to do this project? Mm -hmm. And then I through R, how much money are we putting away every year over the next 10 years right. to. Um, to accomplish this project, which may have been already on the CIP for 15 years already, and be, you know, so it's only a 10-year window of what's going on with the funding. The highlighted cells are the year they're supposed to match column H about when the intended purchase year is. Okay. So in column, that's what I mean. There's nothing in 2022 because the money's already in there in column T. Yes. Yeah, so so it's already yeah. funded. Yeah. Yes, it's oh. fully funded. Well, so, no, originally there was $12,000. Yeah, it was not originally fully funded. Right. Money got moved around. Yeah, yeah, and when we were going through trying to say, okay, let's kind of level set mm -hmm. what the expenses should be for the town from a capital improvement okay. perspective. Right. So so if that's, you and that's why this comment over here mm -hmm. says we added 38000 from the excess okay. that, was, that was in this. So uh, column S is only adding up all of those ten, that 10 year period. Yeah. Column T is what was ever in there from prior years that, mm -hmm. according to what this committee's recommendations, and every year after the warrant passes, you know, it gets distributed. And then when this group meets, mm -hmm. it may get redistributed again as we learn about new projects like the roof. And then U so yeah, is whatever is. the difference is. So when you've saved for 10 years and you all, and in column T you also have money already in the fund, you may still need to come up with another certain amount of money, and that's represented in column T. Right. And then you know the whole thing over there should match the column D. It's like a check and balance to make sure. Right. Yeah, if I spend a little time looking at the formulas, um, I'm sure I'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah, it, it takes a little bit, but after even even for me, it started to. So, to so make sense. Um, just a quick question about the compressors. Um, you know, maybe it's more cost effective to do them all at once, but had you considered kind of a, a, like a phase approach of the worst ones out first? And you, you certainly could. Um, I don't know if we know what the worst ones are. Like we, we had, like I said, the leak in the ladies room and, and that's like patched up for now. We don't know, but we're, but we're basically done with the cooling season. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they get leaks downstairs. I don't know. You know, are we talking about only two really bad ones? They're all past their lifespan, we've been told. Um, so they're all 21-ish years old, dating back to the renovation. So, you know, we, we have been told they're past their, their lifespan. So they could all go at any time. So, but, but still that's for the board to decide, you know, the money's there. Yep. 
you know, so, but, but it's still up to you. And the other thing to remember is that if you put the whole thing, whatever you put on the warrant, and the warrant passes, it doesn't mean you have to do it. Mm -hmm. if, if something changes so that your priorities change or, or you're just not interested or can't figure it out, you know, you have one year to carry over the funds. But you might just decide that you don't like any of the available fun, um, vendors or maybe the product isn't available that you really want or whatever, but you're not committed to actually doing it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Carmen. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, what do we try? Uh, just a quick question. Sure. The um, RP, um, Town Hall RPD system updates, upgrades, what systems? So that's called ongoing, you know, it says they're ongoing because um, it could happen at any given year that it could be, it could fund a, a project, an, a, you know, kind of an unknown project. We have, so we're doing, in, you know, we're working on the phone system and security update and the fire alarm system is going. The ACs are otherwise separately identified. So it's not clear that there are any, you know, not clear, but nobody here is really qualified to assess this building to say that maybe there's something we're not addressing. One thing I would say is the elevator. The elevator is also um, nearing the end of its lifespan. We don't have a quote for that. It probably, you know, it just occurs to me that should be either on the CIP or maybe that's a note under Town Hall RPD that's system upgrades is, is the idea of replacing the elevator. Um, Nobody's assessed this building, um, so I wouldn't say that we know for sure that there's anything left, but I think it's kind of a catch-all account to acknowledge the fact that this is a really old building and we don't know what to expect that it might need. So just to be putting a, a money aside for the idea that, you know, the only thing you know with an old building is that it will need attention of some sort. It was just last year. I think it was just last year because I was on the board that we had uh, the furnace go down unexpectedly. We use I don't know what how much um, 15, 12 minutes on the other unexpected. A lot, yeah. Burner, so, yeah. So does um, I know that we fund um, SIP via warrant article, just a bulk dollar amount, but to draw money out of SIP always requires a warrant article for a specific purpose. Okay. So it can't so otherwise be planning be, ahead. Really, it, yes, it requires planning ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Plan for broken things that exactly. So, so that's the catch twenty two with like the AC compressors, where it's fully funded. What's the benefit of doing it one at a time? So typically, if you don't have the money, you do it one at a time, so you can kind of level out the burden. But the burden's kind of been met. On the other hand, you could leave some of the money in there and do it one at a time, and then the money can help do other things, but but is that really going to solve a greater need? I don't know, you know? Okay. Um, so, Joe, is your goal to kind of talk through the 2022 or generally through the plan? Well, for I think for today, I mean, in... Right, on, on the recap email that went out, uh, we were trying to indicate things that would make sense today because there is an excess of funds in SIP and we said okay well let's use those in a way that makes sense and that's where we came up with the vehicle exhaust system that's necessary, the replacement of the roof and uh, also recommending and we move some money in to handle the AC piece. So those, those are all, all documented here as, as far as suggestions. And then what we were also trying to do was as you look down this column here, the let's take I for, for 2022, is we're, we're trying to level set. No, actually, no, it's not. It's, it's this one here. Um, what is it? Okay. Yeah. yeah, we're trying to level set the, the Warren article that would come up each year for SIP funding to be kind of consistent mm -hmm. and then the details of where that money would be used would be in those other objects. So some of the movement that we did and we tried to be more focused in the in the 2022-2023 years just to get those things out of the way but also do it in such a way that the amount for the um, 
for the Warren article for SIP is, is level balanced. So there's not 50,000 one year, 250 the next, and that sort of thing. So there's a little bit of a shock to the system. So you can make it almost like here, here's, the, here's the rough average, and it might have to go up over the years because of inflation or because of older buildings or whatever, but people should just say this is the rough budgetary number mm -hmm. that the town needs to allocate, and it should be consistent or as level as possible what they need to do in order just to support the basic infrastructure. And you're, obviously, so you're talking yearly. Yes. Right? And you want to try to keep it level. Right, that, like, that is the like, point. Like, just hypothetically, not like we had 600,000 in 2022, we want to have roughly 600,000. Right, because right. the point is that yeah, the I, tax I, burden of this, you know, that's why we created the plan. So you're not doing a plow track and then a cruiser. Right, I agree on some of that. Yeah, so that's what the plan represents. But I would even go one step further. And with the, with the road that he has highlighted, we, we, um, we asked for and received from the town $200,000 for 2021. So I would just throw out the idea that there are years where, like, in theory, we're asking for 2075 for 2022, um, and then down to 1965. Why, why would you ever dip below 200 when you can, you know, it, it depends on what's going on in the operating budget too. You've got to balance the overall burden on the taxpayers on the one hand, but on the other hand, you know, in, in normal years, the, this accrues interest, which benefits the town. But but the glaring elephant that you're not seeing on this spreadsheet is that you have a fire truck coming up that is not at all funded. So um, if you can put away an extra forty-five hundred dollars um, in, in in order to not you know you keep it more level, like always between two hundred and two ten, for example. But if you have an extra $4,500 or something, you can throw it at that fire truck that you know you're going to bond, but at least then you're bonding maybe $800,000 instead of a million dollars when the time comes. So th there are a lot of ways to, um, a lot of moving parts, and you can move them in different ways, and there's nothing correct or incorrect about any of the ways to... But the fire truck isn't, that's a hypothetical number, it's not going to cost a million dollars, is it? Um, I think it's down there for 800 actually, wow. but but it's going up all the time, oh, and it's awesome. still like three or four years out. So, it it, it may cost a million by the time wow. it comes. Yeah. One of the things that we talked about when I was on the budget committee, actually, Bill Irving um, first mentioned it, was that there may be a point at which we need to really start thinking about regional services. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't know what you mean because it just gets too expensive. Right. So one of the things I want to um, bring up, um, and it's been. Um, some of you have heard me complain about it, um, is the fact that we no longer use capital money for roads. And capital money used to be in roads. Well, well, hold on. Two separate things. Two separate things. So road maintenance used to happen by a Warren article, but it was never funded by this fund. It Not every Warren never, article. He never took money out of capital? Well, hold on. It was it was a capital item, but yeah. not all capital is addressed in the capital improvement okay. plan. Right. So this oh, we was did take money out of the capital improvement plan for road maintenance. Um, it, it might. I, I take that back. It might have happened once upon a time, but um, be, so, I so I don't want to say that really clearly because I, I, I may be might, wrong. You might be right. I, I may be wrong, but but I would say before you try to put roads back in there. Um, I would talk to the Department of Revenue because we've already been told that we're trying to encompass too much stuff in this one plan and we would be um, more transparent and more correct to break it out, which is part of why we're asking for the equipment fund to continue to be funded, mm -hmm. um, which is a lesser, smaller fund for some projects. So this spreadsheet's still keeping track of you know, fire radios that because they're equipment they don't qualify for this and it's all very gray to be clear. But what I would suggest with where you're going with that, and I think it's noble, the idea, you know. Well, I didn't finish my statement. Well, oh, so, okay, so let me go, but just make sure you're yeah, using funds. Let me finish the statement. Yeah. Okay. Is there any reason that we can't allocate some of this money that's being reallocated to other, I'll say, stuff? Why can't we be using that money on roads? Yes, I was going there. You, so, so, so the capital improvement plan, when it was approved in 2014, has a document attached to it. Mm -hmm. And this is just a spreadsheet we manage, but it's really restricted by what they call enabling legislation, which is 
the warrant article that approved this concept. So this fund and what you can use it for is dictated by that document that passed at the same time. Can you send us that? So I knew you were going to say yeah, that, and I'm, and I'm not teaching. sure that I can find it. Like you know, I I I, I think can give I, you. I found a website within New Hampshire somewhere that documents and talks about what you can and cannot do with the SIP. Okay. So I don't know how they took that and implemented it into that. Right. So, so they plan. both apply because but, there are yeah. broader statutory yeah. rules around this plan. Mm -hmm. And then there is the plan that this community created and wrote and approved in 2014. Yeah. So still, I would suggest, because roads are really expensive, it makes sense to manage them in this kind of way. But the Department of Revenue has advised us that as much as you can break that down into very specific funds. It's more transparent to the public when you ask for two hundred thousand dollars. What are you really funding? So, and then and then you reduce the risk that DRA is going to say no, you can't use that funding source for that project. So, just to the same extent, I would suggest that the board create a fund for that that you might call the document preservation fund. And you can put money away, and that can be for digitization. It can be for adopting um, electronic processing and, and picking away at digitization and whatever like that. But it's, it's focused and targeted, and people know what it's about. Um, but, it's, but this should not be a catch-all like savings account for everything. This category should not. I mean, just like we have the equipment fund in there, we could add another source for one of these things that represent. So what I would suggest is, so, so the select board authorized Strava Regional Planning to recreate our road, man, road surface management plan, which will in and of itself like help um, flatline the road maintenance budget. But then what you could choose to do with that plan once you have it is you'll get a sense of, geez, it's going to cost us $400,000 a year, put the $400,000 in a fund, and then if you have a dip where there's a year that you only have $350,000 worth of stuff, you still have $50,000 sitting in a plan that the burden on the tax rate is level and that money's there for another year when the burden is $450,000. So, so the concept, I think, is yeah. right on. No, I get, that. I get the concept. I just want to be sure that because... And George has mentioned this, that we're not keeping up with the road. Yeah, George has mentioned he wants, and again, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to use the word correctly, but he wants to use, like, bonded money. Bonded. And pay, yeah. I mean, at some point, and, you know, because we can't keep up, that's exactly what George yeah. said to me, we're going to have to bond. And, well, there's excess but money. But I don't know if we do. That. I, 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 would, I would withhold judgment until you see the, 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 the road service management plan from Strike Regional Planning, because the last version of the plan talked about using... Um, maintenance processes that we don't typically use here, like crack filling. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing that this year, but we haven't, we've done that I think once in the seven years I've been here. Um, but if you do that regularly, um, you know, $7,800 this year, but it, it, it holds the life of that road for an extra three or four years. In the 20 year picture, you're saving a lot of money by doing that. And yeah, so, probably. Strap Regional Planning will incorporate different ways to maintain roads, not just shim and overlay or complete reclaim. Yeah. So, you know, there are a lot of variables, and, and that should help with the big picture. But remember, Sligo's huge, Woods Run, Heritage, Bear Road, they're all, you know, you've got most of your lane miles done in the last, you know, five or so years. You've got a lot of little streets now, and you've got underlying infrastructure. Not to say that that's inexpensive, but um, I'm not sure that you've reached, right. you know, like I, I think you've got at least two-thirds or, or half of your lane miles that you've done in the last five years because those are huge roads that were done recently. And then we'll have to decide when, when we get the study from traffic because traffic, they'll give you, a, for instance, one road is how they have traveled. So that may drop so low. Yeah. The maintenance is so bad you have to make a decision for residents, you know, do we, do we fix all road, for instance, that what people drive on because right. it's completely falling apart. Right, exactly. Or do we put the money in the carers, which, so. Mm -hmm. Right. When is that supposed to come out? When's They've only just started it, okay. but it won't take them long, so I'm hoping they'll have it before snow flies. I would hope. Okay. I don't know now, like, what their um, lead time is. I haven't heard back from them, but I would hope. I don't know if it'll be in time to, to really help inform 
you know, what you want to put on the ballot, you know, an operating budget for, but, but it, you know, it'll it at least inform the budget for 2023. Right. And I'm going to say in the past, the road stuff was an operating line within the highway department. Well, no, well that's what it's been for the last for four the last or five years. years. Right. But to Kim's point, there yes. was a time when a previous select board made a separate Warren article. Yeah. Um, so the select board has the discretion about what goes in a Warren article and what goes in the operating budget, except that if you're going to use a different funding source, like a reserve fund, you can't put it in operating. It has to be a Warren yeah. article. I think some of the comments around it, and, and I guess you have to, you have to you know, respect your elected officials. Some of the concerns were, well, if it's in the operating budget, how do you, and you say you need 100 and 200,000, how do I know you're really going to do that 200,000 on the road? And my view is... They should, and if they don't, you should fire them and get somebody else in. So, I mean, you can do it. It, it can be it can be part of the operating budget. And I thought there were some rulings that kind of said why it had to be there versus as more of a capital item. But I, I think you can argue, argue it whichever way yeah. you know you want to argue it. But yeah. it's select for discretion. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think one of the a couple things. One is like when we commit to that money. Like, well, how can we guarantee that the roads that are really addressed, the roads that m are most needed are addressed? Because I don't know where the decision was made to pay the fire department instead of taking care of roads. But that is a much lower priority when I think about it. So those kinds of things concern me. That, sure. That's whether you put it in a warrant article or you put it in the operating budget, that's for the select board to work out with the it. road agent. So I do. And I everybody's do. going to have a different opinion about it, and it's right. how much you listen to person A or person B. But wasn't like, the fire department piece something, hey, we had the leftover stuff, so that's where we put it? Wasn't that the story? Um, the it, was a, it was slightly more planned than yeah. that. Um, it was um, not specifically budgeted for, but right. it was becoming problematic because of the mud and yeah. trying to plow it. Um, it was an access problem. Um, they were tracking a lot of mud into the station, which was causing other problems. And so it, it, it just worked out that the paving was inexpensive enough in one year that was planned that it allowed enough leftover money and they were in the area that they could do that without going over the paving line. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, that's the uh, that's why you pay the department heads to do it and make intelligence decisions versus mm -hmm. you know. And that's why you have elected that, officials. But yeah. there's no right or wrong because right. ultimately there are way more roads that need to be paved than there will be money for. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you pave will be a good idea, and there will always be something that didn't get paved that could have been that was worthy. There's just never enough to go around. Yep. So, so my last comment on this is um, I would like to see any documentation that restricts this money from being used on roads because I would rather be using excess dollars on roads than some of the, um, I'll call it wish list items. So, so the only thing I'll say about that is, you know, I'll, I'll try to find that document. I don't know that I can. We can um, probably get an opinion about it. And I'll send I would you get an link. attorney's opinion yeah. about it. That's always a good idea. Yeah. I'll send you the link that I found from New Hampshire or whatever okay. about what a SIP is and what you it was very it was helpful for me. Thanks, I would like to Thank you, Joe. What do you want to get out of tonight yet? Do you want well, anything from us in particular stuff? Uh, one to, to see the, the leveling number. Two like that. the um, that there should be a warrant article for equipment. Okay. Um, Three, and I think the next most important, well, probably the most important thing is, is the work that has to be done. And again, this is this is me, and this is all of us listening to um, the department head. I'm one sorry. question, Joe, about sure. the equipment. Yeah. Just that we want to fund the equipment line, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The equipment. General There's overall. another reserve fund yeah. for equipment, and the items um, highlighted in orange are items that would be purchased with those dollars when the purchase year comes. Mm -hmm. Right, and the key thing is that there's this, which uh, this vehicle wash area, which it's been explained has the EPA. Is that the organization that's kind of says by 2022 it has to get done? Yeah. Yes, okay. that's a stormwater thing. So, so Joe has put column C. You see different um, initials there for different funding sources, and he has an A there, which indicates that ARPA funds can pay for it. So while it's on the SIP. It made it onto the SIP last year, but now that we have these ARPA funds, it's not something that really needs SIP funding at all because you can buy it with ARPA funds. 
the thing about that is that they need either a holding tank for the wash water or, you know, the state has said, said that you can't go into their storm drain system. So maybe a, a dry well and have an oil water separator and then it discharges in a dry well. But, but where would you do that at the, at the fire station? And so if you use, if you can, you know, hurry up about this, um, which is hard to do, if you can extend the sewer line to the fire station, then you take the septic system off, That's which is a benefit, because otherwise you have to replace the septic system at some point. Um, so extending the line could be ARPA funds, um, but then you can dig up the septic tank um, with ARPA funds and install a vehicle wash area with a holding tank or a dry well in the location of the former septic tank. You could do that whole project, to my mind, with ARPA funding. And that removes, so whatever money you have allocated on those two projects in the SIP, it could be removed from the SIP and funded through ARPA. The problem with that is you need a, an engineering scope of services from the water sewer district to do that. Um, and, and it has to, you know, there's a, that's, a, that's a huge order of magnitude to have completed or nearly completed by the end of June. But you would say if we're showing progress yes, to that, it, if yes. there's some planning and it's just not sitting on the shelf. As long as you're making yeah. good, you know, the point of the stormwater permit is that you're making notable good progress and if there's something you're not, that's not complete, as long as you can speak to why it's not complete but that you're working on it, that should be fine. So, um, you know, the end of June is not firm, but it is also real and should, you know, you should try to respect it as much as you The other, I, I, I don't want to forget the $19,000 that you still have in the lower right hand right. corner. Um, I want to make sure that they hear about that, that um, every year when we, um, you, like this year we got $200,000, it gets allocated between the different projects according to the previous version of this plan. Because the previous version was the version the select board at that time mm -hmm. adopted. So, so in respect to that, we allocate funds. But sometimes due to interest or because a project didn't cost as much as we thought it might, or for whatever not quite clear reason, you end up with extra money that can be allocated. So this group did some of that, but there's still $19,000 that can be allocated in column T um, on any, to any project on this list. So this group has not... Um, we've made some recommendations and used some of that funding um, and, and dispersed it amongst some things, but not like the vehicle exhaust system, but, but there's still 19 left yeah. that should get allocated somewhere. I mean, like the email said, originally that excess was 102,851. So we did 45,000 for the vehicle exhaust system, 38,000 to replace the roof. That's where the 19,851 came from, is, is the remainder. So, so that's this group's recommendation, but the select board can take this spreadsheet and reallocate any of the funding. Um, you know, every year this is always a working document that's only like approved at any one point in time and then it's under revision again. So the select board might do something different. Yeah, Kim, to what you said, I, I want to reiterate the, the, this it's key that you know the things that the vehicle wash area is out of the town's control. It has to get done at some point. So by moving ahead and either doing it independently or combining it with this, mm -hmm. it does give, while it's a lot of work and it would be nice to do it over another couple of years, by doing it all at once, you can take advantage and it's a, it's a logical use of, of the funds on the American Rescue Plan. Right. And I guess, have you, you haven't gotten no, this presentation from Sean. Have you? Have you? I mean, I sent him an email, the fire about. department presentation. Yeah. Oh. Um. I never heard anything. I don't know if he, maybe he never looks at his, his town email I, I account. I think he does. What was your question? Maybe he just sent uh, it well, to everybody. Well, Sean, uh, the fire department, I don't recall Sean. Glenn. Yeah. Um, he had, he had put together a presentation when the department heads came in and had gone through, here's what the fire department needed for their capital improvement. So that's where these numbers yeah. came from. He does, a, he does a good job with that. He's pretty thorough. So, yeah. so Miles must have been part of that meeting, right? 
Uh, yes, he was here for that. Yeah. Um, do do we have um, that present like presentations that happen from the department heads since? Um, I have a hard copy of the police. Them. But you know what I'll do? We'll we'll try to get Sean's. I do have a hard copy, I believe, from the police. That was done. If I don't, then I can always scan that in. I think it will be useful for whoever the next um, SIP official, ex official is. Um, I'm forwarding it notes. now to the select board, already has it, but I'll send it again to the select board and, and the CIP committee so that you. That's Sean's? Um, Sean's PowerPoint. Yeah. Yeah. And That's you what have, you're looking for, right? Yes. And do you have the police department? I only have a hard copy, but it's got so all over it. So I don't. I think he gave us that electronically. Um, so, no, I mean, what we have in paper is all we have. Um, but uh, for, for that, but I can, I can ask him okay. to send it. And uh, I think that's, Erin, do you have anything else? No. Uh, or do you guys have any other questions? I do. Or? So the vehicle exhaust system for the fire department. Right. Um, what was the proposal on that? And um, so I don't know anything about it. I don't remember though either. I'm sorry. sorry. Um, so there are two. Um, so it's in this PowerPoint that I sent again to the board. Um, there are two choices or two different technologies behind vehicle um, exhaust systems. Well, first, first, can you say what the need is? The need is that um, typically the doors are down in the fire department and they're down, um, you know, if they're not down, then we're losing a lot of heat for, you know, eight months of the year. So, and even when the doors are up, the fire trucks are in the building and every time you turn on a vehicle, you're spewing CO in the building and poisoning the people. That's, that's the need. So it's, okay. it's best practices because cancer is now the leading cause of death of firefighters that it's industry practice that you install some kind of vacuum system to keep the air as clean as possible in the station where they work all the time. Because otherwise, it, in, you know, it gets into their clothing, it gets into all the equipment. You know, it, it's not just in the air, but of course it's in the air. How, how long do they leave these vehicles running inside the buildings? I can't speak to that. Yeah, so, sure. so, even, even, so even if, I, I know where you're coming with that, and I mean, even if they start off with the truck, because I guess that up in the building, and even that little bit is is now considered like something we have to do with talking about. You know, what I mean that's that's where it really comes from. I, I know what you're saying is uh, they run the trucks for 15 minutes, but right. even if they start it up and it runs for 30 seconds and they pull out hmm. and you open the doors and everything leaves, technically, I think what you're saying is we're still contaminating the building. And what they have now are hoses that you see like in. Garage and stuff where they hook them up to the exhaust. They, they don't even have that. Oh, I thought they, they did. Have. They were worried no, about that. That's one away. model. Oh, well, that's no, so that's the model they don't want to go okay. because there's a newer technology that's less right. expensive. And less expensive. Yeah. 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 75. Uh, yeah, that's what they're proposing. But I would yeah. suggest that, um, and if you want, I can send Sean and, and Mark an email and ask them to come talk to you about how it works and what the need is and okay. what their function is. Um, so we talked about the roof replacement. We talked about all right. So we need more information about vehicle exhaust, and that's one of those things where do we have like a ballpark estimate, or is this just? This is I think. I will ask um, that question. Um, I thought his presentation was pretty. I mean, that the fire department yeah. and the police department yeah, were the quotes, pretty specific yeah, about yeah, what they were spent on. So I'd be interested in seeing actually the quotes from police and fire. So quotes for anything that's known. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Um, so what decisions do we need to make at this meeting, Joe? You don't need to make any decisions at okay. this meeting. Like when the select board is ready, and it might be like since you're close to having a third member, it might be something. You're kind of on the line. Like we're on the one hand, you need to hurry up and make some budgetary decisions. On the other hand, you almost have a new board member, so it would be nice to put that, you know, bring that person along in those decisions too. But this is just to help you understand 
what this committee did and what this represents <laughs> and make sure you've got your, you know, the questions this committee can answer are answered and then um, the board can decide, you know, what kind of more information do you want from department heads, if anything, mm -hmm. and um, whether or not you think you want to move forward with any of these things or all of them. So you're only proposing to fund two things this year, Joe. Um, I thought it was Highway three. roof and fire department. Well, well, um, ACs, yeah. I, oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so this list, oh, I see. Okay. Um, here we go. Yes, thank you. Um, oh, I okay, okay. And so not all of these are capital approval. The, mm -hmm. the two of them are the, um, there should have been another one. Oh, just the vehicle wash area. I think body cameras, that is um, out of their budget though, right? That's right. That's why it has an O. We yeah. put that into the, we're suggesting that it go into the operating budget. Right, but we're leaving it in here to see what happens, to see does the board do it out of operating, or do they say no and do it this way, or no altogether. Okay. Um, it's, it's a way to not lose track of the idea in case nothing comes of it, and then next year we can think about it again. Okay. I think, well, this is talking about, but I think something should come up with like this year, not next year. Yeah, are they proposing for this? Yeah. But, yeah. Well, yeah, you know, we not wait until 2022? No, wait, but do it not wait another year. Oh, right. Right. And, and that's what John had talked about yeah. also. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the takeaways are, um, Carolyn, you, we're going to try to find any documentation that describes the restrictions around CIP money? I will try to find a CIP fund um, okay. document, yes. Um, which, which I'll give you is vague, and I wouldn't... So, so that is um, the guiding document, and you're bound to that on the one hand. On the other hand, just like anything that's written, um, it's open to interpretation, and that's why we have lawyers, because anything can be interpreted and misinterpreted mm -hmm. and, and can be vague. And so it's always a good idea to consult an attorney, um, particularly if you want to do something new, because the Department of Revenue has always authorized everything we've done in the past, but if you want to do something new, I would consult both an attorney, but also um, the Department of Revenue, because they're the ones who are ultimately going to um, deny it. You know, so, so you could create a warrant article to say road maintenance for $300,000 at a CIP, and it passes by the people, and then you start funding it, and then DRA knocks on your door and says no. Okay. So th that's the worst case scenario. Is this, have you guys lost, I know, how many people, how many people are using this SIP? Um, so school, budget committee, planning board, so we need somebody from planning board, um, which is, you know, vacant now, um, myself and a select board member. Okay. So you, you have four people here now, plus you need one from planning. Okay. Um, so, Aaron, none of the school um, stuff is ready, or it's... We it's not that. included here because... Two separate government and entities. I didn't mean to interrupt you, okay. but but the purpose is just to stay informed so that we're not doing like both half million projects, half million dollar projects in the same year and overburdening the tax rate. But just to like communicate and and know more. But if you would, I didn't mean to speak for you. I just wanted to get that no, out. No, that's <laughs> that was my understanding. Um, I you know this is my first year on the committee, but that was my understanding was to just kind of keep the various boards informed so that I know what coming from the rest of the town and vice versa. Okay. So same for water and sewer, I'm guessing since it's a separate entity. It would be helpful to have a rep from there, yeah, absolutely. And, and particularly where they're facing a lot of um, infrastructure needs, which are always expensive. Mm -hmm. um, the difference with that is it's, it's either ARPA funding, so, so maybe there's no tax impact, or else it's um, affecting rates. Yeah. Um, so it's still pertinent for the select board and the school board to know because you don't want to burden the residents of the district who are facing increased fees due to a major project on the same year that you're doing half a million dollars worth of ventilation and you're buying, bonding a fire truck. You know, like you don't want to, you, you want to avoid doing all that in the same year. I never understood why all three entities didn't sit down at the table to look at the total tax burden that they're asking for from residents. Um, in highway, school, and us, right? Um, school, water, and town. Water. I mean, that's what I meant. Yeah. So, so, 
in every way that's beneficial and people would know more and learn more and um, make bigger level decisions in a better contextual environment. Um, the struggle is that um, the select board created the 2021 operating budget and warrant, capital warrant articles and estimated revenue and all of that thinking that it would have a tax impact of X. Um, well, the school board did, and, and the water sewer district did their own similar process, but then lo and behold, um, you know, the school, for whatever reason, didn't have two special ed kids they used to have, and now they're giving back to the town $400,000, which they could, you know, put away toward mountain maintenance, but they don't need that much. They're giving it back to the town. There's no way to predict that. So here we are getting ready to set the tax, and that, all that's hypothetical, by the way. Um, so, so here we are um, yeah. setting getting ready to set the tax rate. And, and, and we may have you know, a drop in the tax rate where we were anticipating a 40 cent increase in the tax rate. Like, th there's remarkably little control over that because um, you really, n budgets are only anybody's best guess at one point in time and then actual life happens and then, and then we'll see. So there's a, there's a lot of benefit to trying to coordinate so that when you are planning a burden, that, that you're not doing all that big burden stuff at the same time, but when it comes down to it and what's the effect on the tax rate, you kind of can't really control it. And then, by the way, so the town's only 20% of the tax rate. Um, you know, what is the county and the state doing? Like, you know... That's minimal, though. It, it is... But it the is, school's not. Right. The school's big. And, and they can have big fluctuations, and, and like, like special ed being one of them, one person moving in or moving out, and they give back money, um, you know, despite the best intentions from the most noble and most intelligent people, it, you're still not really going to be able to control it totally. But it doesn't mean you shouldn't try. Absolutely, you should try. Yes. Okay. And you, you, can, you may not be able to control it, but the more you're on top of it, the better off you can. Yes. You can go ahead. And so you're not going to be shocked. I think it's just the nature of each one of those boards being comprised of volunteers. Um, and, and, and the burdens of the boards they're on is so great that it's really, you know, y you have, what, like probably four or five subcommittees going on at any given time that a board member is responsible yeah. for sitting on. You know, so, so when you add, like, like, so it's not just the once a month board meeting, but then it's negotiations and it's, you know, all these other things. Right. And the SAU board. And so to ask, like, like, I think it's a great idea, like monthly, the three, or, or maybe quarterly, they all meet. But, but you're saying they mean a lot, and I'm not saying they mean a lot. Like, can you time. actually, like, you cannot say to any one of you, you, you shall come to this meeting, <laughs> you know? No. So you would hope so, but I, I think that that's just my personal opinion about why it's never happened, because certainly people have always thought that that was a good idea. So I hope you're able to do it, because I think, to your point, there's a lot of benefit if you can make it happen. But, I mean, we come at the Budget Committee, right, all those different entities are part of that. Isn't sure. it? I mean, to me, that's kind of... Really and that is the purpose of the yeah. budget committee, exactly, right. is to make sure that... Is the school representative on the budget yeah. committee? Absolutely. Yeah. They have an ex officio, and the water sewer district has right. an ex officio in the town. So that really is the purpose of the budget committee, is to keep the sky-level view mm -hmm. on the tax burden and say, you know, since it's really not flexible on the, you know, on the side of the town this year, then school, no. Or, or whatever they're going to say to try to... But that doesn't mean that the governing bodies shouldn't communicate and know more about what, what's going on with each of their mm -hmm. things. Okay. So that's really from a finance perspective. But I think it's also worthy to recognize that there are other things going on with the boards and committees on those different levels that would be helpful for one another to know that really maybe are not financially related. Financially related. Thank you. Well, thanks for both of you guys for putting yeah. the time. Um, so, so, so the other takeaway is um, we'll try to get some the uh, presentation from Sean for the vehicle. Yeah, I, I just forwarded Sean's presentation, to PowerPoint, and spreadsheet to okay. the select board and the CIP committee. So you have that. I've reached out to Fire to say if you can possibly attend, and I copied the select board on the email to say if you can possibly attend Monday, please do, yeah. um, and talk more about the vehicle exhaust system and its purpose and, and provide any clues you may have. Did John provide any um, background information on body cameras? Um, he just talked, like, you know, hypothetically about the use, 
I don't remember any I don't. paperwork about it. No, no, that. I'll, I'll, I'll just get Yeah, he had a spreadsheet. Yeah, if you have it, can you share it? Yeah, I don't, I don't think he has yeah, no, on the price line. I mean, pretty much, in, I mean, he has 2022, he's suggesting 25000 and has a note here with, I mean, justifying it, as you'd expect, with the increase in police act scrutiny, body cameras provide a mean to record police interaction outside the vehicle, public, okay. that kind of thing. That's the most, that's the explanation. So each of these major things here, he has a, a sentence or two about it, but that's the extent of what he what he went over. With. I can ask him if he has some, some background. I'm, I'm writing a, a note now, and yeah, how many cameras, how it breaks down, yeah. just even a ballpark, so we know Yeah, what he definitely saying. had all that. I don't mm -hmm. think it was necessarily in the yeah. form oh, that he okay. sent us, but he knew it, you know. Yeah, one of his officers was here. Yeah, okay, so. great, so they have it. Uh, are you sending an email? And I'm copying the board. Okay, great. Thank you. Right. Well, thank you for your time on this. Oh, yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Listen, you guys. Um, no, but you want to know like two dollars an hour now? <laughs> I haven't. Yeah, I haven't sat. I haven't sat and you know discussed CIP in a while, except for the miles of important. So it's good to sit and see see what you guys are talking about and how it all formulates together. I haven't seen this at budget since I was on the budget committee. Yeah, so. it's been a while too. So. Um, so I expect we'll have another meeting, um, well, another meeting to kind of, as we get closer, to discuss a little bit uh, more detail about the request and then, um, well, I mean. Yeah, I don't know the problem. I mean, I'm four meetings into this, so I don't okay. really know. But I guess there is something on the budget committee agenda to go over this. So I, I, I don't recall. And, and, and that. that would be like for you, Joe, just like the department heads talk about this is what I presented to the yeah. board, what I'm looking for. Um, if you could explain to the budget committee, this was our process and what That's we're talking about and what we're recommending to the board, but then yep. the board separately will say, just like you will for all the other departments, you know, we heard from the department heads and the CIP what they proposed that you heard already, but this is what we're, you know, of all those recommendations, this is what we're actually planning to do. This is our final proposed budget. This, these are our Warren articles we're going to propose for 2022. The select board. The select yes. board does that. Yeah. But but still, it's it would be appropriate for you to give this committee's version of this process and recommendation to the select board to the budget committee, and then the select board yes. will follow up with, this is what we did with that recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Great. Yeah. All right. Watch your eyes. Thank you, Nancy. Okay. Thank you. Shall we adjourn by consensus? Oh, apologies. Yeah. Do we have? Yes. We do.